Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. It is a beautiful day here in Florida. The temps have dropped, the sky is blue, and the air is just uh, nice and crisp out. So it's a great day to uh, have the doors open in the shop. We're gonna do a little bit of welding, a little bit of fabricating, a little bit of machining today. We're gonna go ahead and jump back in on the, uh, the truck hitch crane build here. And I've got everything set up there on the back of the truck to kind of give you an idea of where we're at and what we're about to uh, get started on. So we're gonna, we're gonna get started on the next phase of the build here. All right, so here is our uh, column. This part of it finished up. You might've seen that now. This is all finished besides the, the long bolts there. We still gotta get those, but anyway, that's done. So what we're gonna start on now is this piece, this piece of pipe that is gonna be, you know, cut to length machine and welded to this crossbar. I'm not really sure what exactly to call this piece here. So I'm gonna just consider it the cross beam or the crossbar that is gonna fit into this piece for the hitch right there. All right, so what I'm trying to do is just kind of figure out the length at which I want to cut this piece of pipe right here. I've got this piece of nylon sitting here because this is gonna be the bushing for this piece of pipe, okay? And I machined the end pin here, the length of it to fit that nylon bushing. This was just, you know, this length here is six inches. So we've got it machined to uh, take up that entire length of that nylon right there. So my idea behind this, I'll show you a shot of this. I actually stood this up here and held it. And where this is positioned here actually seems like it's going to be a pretty good height for the crane to be able to operate. Because one thing that I was trying to keep in mind is a height here to where, you know, you're going to pick something up and have enough height to put it in the back of the truck. So I think that's gonna work pretty good. So I'm gonna have this measured out so that this portion of the pipe here is gonna be at least this six inch length above where the weld is. One of the problems I'm gonna have anytime you have a situation like this, you go to weld these pieces together, it's gonna draw this pipe, it's gonna distort it a little bit. I'm not really too concerned about this because of what it is. You've got a pin that just slips down in there. It's going to rotate. This isn't something that is used every day, all day. So the precision of this isn't really that critical, but we're going to make it as close as we can, all right? So probably have this so that the bushing is at least six inches above the weld here. And then i got to figure out a length. We'll probably go, you know, at least six, eight, ten inches below the tube. And then we've got this piece of pipe here that still needs to be cut. This is going to be served as the foot that's going to support the bottom down here. That length I'm still not sure of. That's why I just need to go ahead and figure out how long I want this. Get it cut and then I'll know how long to cut the, uh, the foot that's going to adjust right there. So what we'll do, wherever this is cut, I'll have a hole drilled in it. We'll have a pin and then this piece of pipe will have a series of holes drilled in it. Probably don't need that many, but we'll do a several series of holes so that I can adjust this, adjust the foot as needed. Because, you know, depending on the elevation of where the truck is sitting at when you use it, you may be, you know, cattywampus a little bit. You might need a little bit of adjustment out of that. I did have someone bring up the uh, concerns of once the thing is loaded or once the truck is loaded, like you pick something up and set it in there, he was concerned about the weight of the truck sitting down on that and not being able to get that pin out. That is a valid concern, but I honestly think that it's not gonna be that big of a problem. I think there's enough slack in this system that you can kind of grab this and maybe wiggle it a little bit and pull the pin out if it is sitting down on there. Like I'm saying, you've got some slack here. So see that right there? So you've got some movement that I think is not gonna be a problem. The other thing that you could do to implement that is having a you know, an adjustable foot, like uh, kind of like a, the jack for a trailer, you know, or I was even thinking something along as of something like this, even though I'm not going to, I don't want to use this, but this is the idea is having something like that, an adjustable screw that you can fine tune it, you know, so that you can adjust it and then loosen it up. So this wouldn't be a bad idea as well, if you could kind of engineer something like that, some kind of screw to uh, put in there to do a fine adjustment. But we're gonna use what I have 
And we're gonna use this stuff right here and we'll have a simple pin adjustment on this. All right, sorry about the light of the camera. The sun is always right here in the morning time. I just wanna give you a uh, look to kind of give you an idea what this is gonna kind of look like when it's uh, sitting down on there, just like that right there. This is adjustable in and out, so you can bring it in closer to the tailgate, just like I'm showing there. And so, you know, we've got the boom in there, but the boom sticking out like that. I think this is gonna be a nice height for this to work at right there. It likes to be just a little bit higher than this, but I think this is gonna work. The, the cylinder is gonna be right here. So, I mean, there's nothing here that's gonna hit the cable or anything like that. I just wanna make sure that it is up high enough so that we can get to the deck height of the bed of the truck right here. So this is how it's gonna kind of work right here, just like that. I am thinking about adding another, there is a handle that pulls, that bolts to this top, but I'm thinking about welding a piece of pipe somewhere on this column so that you can take the handle that you use for the hydraulic cylinder and once you got this thing loaded down, say with several hundred pounds, it might be a little hard to turn it. Maybe stick that handle through a piece of pipe and use that for leverage to be able to use that to turn this thing like so. So that's another idea I have. We're just gonna find out if all this stuff works because I've never built one before. But I have an idea that, that it probably will work. And there's a hundred ways, probably even more that you can do this. This is the way that I chose to, uh, to put it together. Just to recap real quickly, I've decided to change the height of this uh, piece right here, this piece of pipe. And we're gonna make this so that whenever the, the column sits down in there, it's gonna be about even with the deck of the tailgate right here, okay? I was doing some checking on this and I've noticed some other designs that they, they didn't have it down here, that it was up here and it looks like it's probably uh, better position to be up here this high. So I've done some measuring and from the uh, approximately from the top of the tailgate here down to this crossbar is 15 inches right there plus the width of the beam. I'm going to cut this piece of pipe to 24 inches long and that's where we're going to make that. I've been just kind of doing some measurements so this is kind of what it'll look like right there. We'll have a, a hole drilled through on the bottom side so we'll have a bolt or some kind of hitch pin uh, and the foot will slide through there and this will give me plenty of material to be able to support that other piece of pipe for the foot there So this is where we're going to be at We're going to use the monarch lathe to uh, machine our piece of pipe right here Going to set up the steady rest to uh, hold it so that we can skin our bore Already got the four jaw set at the uh, three and a half inch diameter. Just lightly chuck it to get it square. And I've got a, uh, I've got a bell center here in the uh, tail sock. And I'm gonna assume that this cut will be straight enough to allow the center to hold it true enough. But what we'll do, we're gonna true up this end. Once we get this end true, I'm gonna move this down some and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna machine a spot on here that's running true for the steady rest. If you don't do that, when you go to skin your ID, it's not gonna be round. So let's go ahead and get an indicator set up and get this guy trued up here. Not bad at all. It's not tight, so you start tightening your highs. So you're gonna see out of roundness on, on material like this, especially pipe. So what you wanna focus on is 180 degrees out. You want the two jaws to be averaged out about on the same line. And once you get those two, you move to the other two. So I'm just visualizing that right there, looking at it, you're about minus one, minus two. Swinging around the other side, you're uh, minus 12 there. So you know this side's low. Loosen that so it's already loose. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of snug the highs. Average it out. So that's pretty close. That's within one to two. Give it one more little bump there. 
That's close. Now go to the other jaw. What's it at? That's at 83, 84. And you come around here, it's around 80, 87, 88. So tighten your high there and just average it out. It's pretty close, right about there. I'm not, not over tighten it, try not to squeeze it very much. 84, 83, 84, 83, 82. So go back around here to the high spot. Another little squeeze, and that's pretty close. So go to the other one, check it again. That's around 93, 94, 93. All right, so there we are. That is close enough right there, and you're running in the center. Even though you're watching an indicator move, that's just rolling across the uneven surface of the pipe. But now we have it centered in the jaw right there, in the chuck, I mean. You see how it's running on that center. Uh, one of the problems with saw cut material is that whenever you stick a center in there, if the saw cut is at an angle, then it'll cause this end to run out some. Now, depending on how far it out, it may not matter. So let's see. All right, it's got a little bit of run out. You might be able to see. Let me get you in here and show you this. See that uneven cut right there? That's what will cause a little run out on this end of your material. But I think for our sake, what we're going to do is just go ahead and call it where it's at and not worry about that. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to move this guy down. I'm going to move it down out of the way. And I'm just going to mark me a spot with a Sharpie right there that we're going to undercut this nice and straight. So the pads measure about, a, about an inch in diameter, I believe. So I want to bring it down. I'm going to bring it down past where the bush ends. So our bush end is going to be right here. All right, so I'm just gonna start right here at six inches. Just put me a line and I'll just measure it out to, let's say inch and a quarter. That should be plenty right there. So that's our area that we will undercut it nice and true. For our undercut, we're gonna use our handy MCHNN tool. CNMG insert. Setting a zero here on the cross slide just so I can see how deep I gotta go. We're just cleaning it up. That looks like that might work. That's 30,000. So I wanna do is just stop it so we can look at it because it looks like there's a little low spot. Yeah, still a little bit in there. All right, so that's 30 thousandths. So 15 thousandths per side is what you're uh, reducing it down to. Watching that tool to come up to that Sharpie mark, clean it up, and that'll work. Oh, look at that, I was wrong. Still got, <laughs> it can be deceiving. So let's go ahead and Take another cut. I thought for sure that was cleaned up there. So that was 30. How about we go into uh, 40? Still got a little bit there. That little bit of material that we're taking off there is not going to hurt the integrity or the strength of this, or what this uh, pipe is going to do. So it's not a, not a big deal to that. Oftentimes had people question that when I was showing that on some of the, the hydraulic tubes that we're doing. This is, this is common practice is to skin your OD to a true spot. We still got one little spot right there. So I'm gonna make one, one more pass, but I'm not gonna show that because you see what I'm doing here. And uh, I'll bring you back whenever we go into uh, set our steady rest to it. All right, just getting our steady rest set. And let's go ahead and Get the uh, fingers here. 
adjusted. Come up very gently until it just touches and you can usually see the first one because it'll put some grease or whatever on the, the OD. And you can feel it right there. You can see the line, but I can actually feel the friction in this little uh, finger wheel right there. So that's all we need. You don't torque in on it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, snug this one up. We'll go around and do the backside. Just make sure when you're doing this, never reach over your workpiece to do this. You can easily get snagged and pulled in there. So just play it safe. Come around to the backside. Same thing, just come up. Very gently come up. And I can feel it touching because I can feel the friction coming through. And I'm not turning it hard. I'm just trying to get whatever slack is in the screw out of it. That's it right there. Snug that up. Now we're ready to go. So I do have a can of making sure this is the right one this yeah this is a can of whey lubricant right here and i'll use that to uh, lubricate that guy go ahead and back off on the tailstock here slide the tailstock back out of the way now we can go ahead and close it up This one should never, you should never have that one tight. You want to be able to adjust it slightly. Because as you're machining, this usually grows just slightly enough that it'll start binding up on those fingers there because of the friction. I come down, same thing. I'm just barely, barely turning that, feeling the friction, and that's going to be good enough right there. All right, we're going to start off by facing the end, get that cleaned up. Not spinning real fast just because we're on the steady rest there I'm, and I'm just visually moving this over. We will put our other tool back in here that we use for the undercut. It's a handy tool for cutting the chamfer right there. All right, now we're ready to skin it out. So all I really want to do is just true the ID up. Um, you know, I'll, I'll measure it and see if there's a nominal size we can get it close to, but that's the main thing we want to do is just, uh, just make it round. I'm getting the stick out where I need on the boring bar here because of the depth that I want to take this. So I want to bore this piece of pipe six inches deep. And that's going to give me probably a half inch clearance of the bottom of the nylon bushing that's going to press in there. So this is a little trick I want to show you that you can use to use this bar, this stick out right here, to set your stop on your workpiece without having to do a bunch of measuring and stepping off if you're not using a, a DRO. So I'm going to set the tip of the tool about six and a half inches from this face. We're going to use this as our reference right here. So I'm going to set this about six and a half. It doesn't have to be um, dead nuts on it. It's still a little snug, so let me get this. Okay, so that's about six and a half right there. I'm just measuring to the tip of the uh, insert right there. So that looks like about six and a half. Yeah. All right. What I'm doing is I'm giving myself a half inch clearance between the, um, the end of the pipe and this surface right there. So that's why I'm measuring out six and a half. And I'll show you what I'm getting at here. Uh, I'm going to use this little level just to kind of level the, um, the bar in there. That way we're, that way the inserts on the proper, the proper, uh, rake there. That'd be good. And then we're going to tighten this back up. Now that we got our bar adjusted where we want, six and a half inches, this is tight, it's level. 
we're going to go ahead and run our bar into the workpiece here. Now all you got to do is just take a scale and just measure it just like this. Just like so, just butt it up against your workpiece and just do a scale measurement. This doesn't have to be exact. And that looks like a half inch uh, clearance right there. So now I'm going to come down here on the ways that I'm going to set my indicator for my stop point. And where we do, this will, this will be, once I make my cut, that's six inches deep. Because remember, we went six and a half inches stick out. So you just subtract a half inch from it right there, and that'll be your stop point. So we'll come down here on the ways. I'm just using my mag back indicator right here. And we're going to set a zero. That will be our stop position there six inches deep all right simple enough i'm going to touch the tool off here and all i want to do is just clean it up that's that rolled over area that we uh when we faced it off i don't know how much it's going to take probably about the same amount when we had to skin that od there I'm not running as fast as I would like to because of the use of the steady rest there. Take another 20. We'll go through there and let that let that make its cut. That's uh, 60 thousandths right there. back off on the tool so it don't drag because it doesn't matter what size it is we can go back in there and touch that up still got a low spot that didn't clean up you can see the rust there so I'm just gonna make one more pass through there and just get this cleaned up nice and round a lot of these little techniques that I'm sharing with you you know is stuff that I have uh, just picked up and learned over my uh, course of the career doing this um, you know having to do a lot of stuff in the steady rest having to machine a lot of tubes especially for those hydraulic cylinders I'm gonna go ahead and put another touch of whey oil here on the steady rest to slow the feed rate down that was 12,000 I'm gonna go to 10 and see if I can just improve that finish a little bit just making sure that this is not loose is all so that's looking good I think that's gonna clean it up that was just another 20 thousandths from what we had uh, our previous cut
All right, I think that bore is gonna be good. It looks nice and clean. There's no more uh, low spots in there. So I never did actually measure it to see where it's at. Um, I just wanted to clean it up. So I'll actually use my telescope gauge and micrometer to measure this. We'll write the measurement down. You know, of course, to give our uh, bushing a couple of thousandths press fit down into that. We do want to give this a, a good chamfer here, get rid of that sharp edge. Just using my high speed tool bit for this. A little bit more than that. And I'm going to take some emery. I got a piece down here. I'm going to find a piece of course. I want to go ahead and soften that chamfer up there, make sure there's no burrs off of it. Just like that. Okay. All right, that piece is, this is ready. All right, so this piece is ready for the bushing now. I want to go ahead and get a measurement and see about where it's at. So it looks like it's just under three inches. That's 995, 995 and a half. So we're right there at the three inch mark. So I'll use my telescope gauge to get a proper measurement on that. We're gonna go ahead and get started on the piece of nylon right here. So we'll go over to the Victor lathe to do this. And now my plan is what we're gonna do is, is rough machine this piece. We'll go ahead and get us a hole down through there. We're gonna turn it to fit in here. And we will go ahead and get this piece. We'll get the OD finished press it inside this pipe. Then we'll set the pipe back into the lathe here and we will bore it with a boring bar to uh, finish it to the size. That way it'll be nice and round and uh, cause this is gonna get a little thin holding on to. And then that way we can press it in there and go ahead and finish it out right here in the Monarch lathe.